Friday Inspiration Boost. Zen Keys, Tish Nathan. Introduction by Philip Kaplan, A Guide to Zen Practice. This is really deep. I mean, this, I'm not even sure where I can go with this. I just think it's beautiful. Experience itself. She invites someone over for a cup of tea, then she asks them to describe the cup of tea. You use your memory, your concepts, your, your vocabulary to describe the sensations. You may say, it is a very good tea, the best tea, Quan Ying tea, manufactured in Taipei. I can still taste it in my mouth. It is very refreshing. You could express your sensation in many other ways, but these concepts and these words describe your direct experience of the tea. They are not the experience itself. Indeed, in the direct experience of the tea, you do not make the distinction that you are the subject of the experience and that the tea is its object. You do not think that the tea is the best or the worst of the Tian Kian Ying of Taipei. Forget the pronunciation, forgive that, please. There is no concept or word that can frame this pure sensation resulting from experience. You can offer as many descriptions as you like, but only you have had a direct experience of the tea. When someone listens to you, she can recreate for herself certain sensations based on experience that she might have had, but that is all. And you yourself, when you are describing the experience, are already no longer in it. In the experience, you are one with the tea. There was no distinction between subject and object, no evaluation, and no discrimination. That pure sensation is an example of non-discriminative wisdom, which introduces us to the heart of reality. And then she goes into the moment of awakening. To reach truth is not to accumulate knowledge, but to awaken to the heart of reality. Reality reveals itself complete and whole at the moment of awakening. In the light of awakening, nothing is added and nothing is lost. Emotions based on concepts no longer affect us. This is such thought-provoking material when you're thinking about writing about an experience that your character has in fiction or that you had in real life. You are no longer the subject of that experience. You are now trying to relate that experience to someone else in a way where then they can have their own reaction to it. And that is the magic of writing, of how it can mean 101 things to 101 people. It could even mean 202 things to 101 people because we can all go away from somebody's writing with maybe this, maybe that. Magic, isn't it? Sleight of hand with words and experiences. Or is it that we have to let go of our writing to let somebody else have their own experience with it? And in that letting go, when we have done our best to be authentic, when we have done our best to thwart our fictional characters with what they want, when we have done our utmost best to be honest and authentic on the page, to let somebody else see us as the subject of our experience and then make their own meaning out of it, they might be able to find the common thread that links them to our fictional characters or to ourselves in our memoir. It's up to us to show up and portray our experiences with all the details and deep into the weeds when we need to, but to always show and not tell so that we can let 101 people have 202 or 303 or 606 different interpretations of what we have just shared. So take one of those small macrocosm moments from your life that stands out and go right. Write first a draft in total, complete detail, and then try writing it with simply metaphors. Change out some of the weak verbs for power verbs. Have some fun with the revision and taking a look at the experience that you've put down on the page from an outside point of view. See where that takes you on the page. Bye for now. Go write.